Right. Okay. So a short recap on who Rashi was. First of all, Rashi is really a acronym for Rav Shlomo Yitzchaki. Reish Shin Yud is Rav Shlomo Yitzchaki. And there's a there's different commentaries exactly what the abbreviation is, is. But namely, Rav Shlomo Yitzchaki was Rav Shlomo, the son of Yitzchak. In fact, the very first Rashi in the Bible on Parashat Bereshit starts off Amar Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak, his father was a very great uh, scholar. He actually taught Rashi at the beginning of his life, um, I think till the age of, um, I can't remember the exact age. Quite a serious part of Rashi's um, education was from his father. And that's why Rashi, when he starts off his commentary on the Torah, he actually opens up with a, uh, an idea from his father. Rashi lived in the year 1040. He died in the year 1105. He was 65 years old when he passed away. He was in the, he passed away in the city of Troyes. Um, Sam, am I, am I pronouncing it correctly? Good. In France, Rashi most famously was known to actually be a businessman. He actually had a vineyard where he uh, which he kept and sold grapes. There's a big discussion whether it's true or not. Apparently the grapes are not great. Now it's now about Concord grapes for those that want. But essentially um, what, what, what the, the tradition is that Rashi was actually had a vineyard which he took care of and that's how he sustained himself from a uh, business point of view. Rashi actually eventually had a yeshiva in, in Troyes and, um, and he was eventually a very famed yeshiva and he was eventually buried in the same place. Um, what happened to his, his grave to his grave site, we don't know. I think it's pretty much got lost over ages. Only recently, in recent years, they discovered the area where he, it should have been. And in fact, my wife's uncle, I actually just read today, I didn't know this, um, erected my wife's uncle's somebody called Israel Meir Gabai. Interestingly enough, my, my wife's mother's family is Gabai also. My, you can imagine my wife's grandfather was very happy when we got married. You know, finally, she got back to where she was supposed to. But the bottom line is, um, apparently he's a big uh, macha, if you want, where he goes around, he went to Uman and, and established the whole thing over Nachman's uh, grave and many, many great uh, forsaken and forgotten uh, grace, holy sites are actually um, got reestablished with new yeah, tombstones and stuff through his tireless efforts. And he apparently set a new um, um, memorial um, over there on Rashi's, over Rashi's graveside and marked it as a sacred site. Okay, what's interesting to note that um, Rashi, in fact, was the very first commentary to be written as an official commentary alongside the Bible. So it was the first book which was printed with a commentary and that was in, in the, the early 1400s. What people don't know is, you know, we often talk about Rashi script. Rashi script was not written, written by Rashi. Rashi did not write Rashi script. And the, it's, it's just interesting that the, the reason why Rashi script is known as Rashi script is only because later on, when they decided to print Rashi, the person that printed it, um, I forgot his name, actually wanted to differentiate between the text of the Torah and the commentary, namely being Rashi. So he established a new type of text, which is really the script of the Sfaradim at the time, which was the common norm. And that's why he got named and coined as Rashi text, but again, Rashi script was not written by Rashi and not established by Rashi. It only came um, much later. Now, why is Rashi so important? Rashi is the authoritative commentary um, written on the Torah. We have to know that in fact, Rabbeinu Tam, Rabbeinu Tam was the grandson of Rashi. Rashi had three daughters and his grandson was Rabbeinu Tam. Many, many of you might have heard him because Rabbeinu Tam argued on Rashi most famously on the type of the order of the way tefillin are worn. So tefillin shel rosh has four parts to it. 
there's two, we have two tefillin, one we put on the arm, one we put on the head. The one we put on the head is actually a split into four different parashiyot, two, two, four different parts. And the question is, what's the order of those parts? Rashi has one opinion, and Rabbeinu Tamir's grandson has another opinion. But either way, his three daughters were very, very great. It's interesting to note that Rashi's three daughters, he actually taught them Torah, like he would teach his sons. Um, not so common back in the day. <laughs> and um, in fact, Rashi's daughters um, married very great Samir Chamim, who essentially all, all his later uh, grandsons were all great uh, Talmudic scholars in their own right. Rabbeinu Tam, his, his uh, grandson, writes, the Chida brings this down, the Chida has got a book called Shem HaGedolim, all the different names of the great Sadiqim and great Chachamim who lived throughout the ages, and he writes like a short biography next to each one. About Rashi, he writes, he brings this idea, and he says that Rabbeinu Tam writes about Rashi, his grandfather, he says Rashi wrote the Pirush Ala Torah, his commentary on the Bible, at the very end of his life. After he had written his authoritative work on the Talmud, in fact, the Talmud is always printed together with Pirush Rashi, with the commentary of Rashi. Someone who learns Talmud without Rashi, it's pretty much, it works hand in hand. It's, it's, it's almost as if, you know, you don't, you've never learned Talmud before, you've never learned Talmud with Rashi. But what's interesting to note is that Rashi wrote his commentary on the Bible after he wrote his commentary on the, on the Talmud. Um, the Chida writes that, in fact, that Rabbeinu Tam says, I could have written the commentary on the Talmud like Rashi did. However, I could never have written the commentary on the Torah like Rashi did. What's incredible about Rashi on the Torah as a commentary is there's something very unique about it. First of all, Rashi often writes in a very simple fashion, very simple way of writing where children at uh, you know, five years old already begin, or five, six, seven years old, begin learning Rashi and, and can relate to the way Rashi explains the Torah. And yet great Talmudic scholars will learn the same Rashi and understand it on a whole different level. So it's incredible that you can have the same wording and be written in seemingly such a simplified form, yet you'll find that the understanding of both are two different levels um, or very different levels. In fact, the Chida actually writes that Rashi, before he wrote his commentary, fasted 613 fasts. And he writes that Rashi al Torah, besides of being a simplistic form of understanding the, the basic words of the Torah, but you have to know that Rashi was written al pi Kabbalah and it's got some very esoteric understanding. Um, to the basis behind the wording. Rashi, we said, is an acronym for Reb Shlomo Yitzchaki. His name was Reb Shlomo, and his father's name was Yitzchaki. The other acronym, which is often referred to Rashi, is actually Rabban Shel Yisrael, the teacher of the Jewish people. And why is that? I once heard this 